Hey guys, I'm Eric Perkins. Welcome to the first episode in a very exciting series that we're gonna do following the construction of a home from start to finish, every step. We're calling this home the Modern Mountain Getaway and it's located in beautiful Bryson City, North Carolina. Let's get going. Okay, let's check out this house. This is a 1,050 square foot custom home. That means it's for a client. 750 square feet is on the main level, which will be a stained concrete slab. There's also a 300 square foot loft with a bath and a mechanical room. The house faces south and features large vaulted ceilings, huge view windows, and lots of outdoor space. This is it, first scoop. And the house is underway. Well, it wasn't quite that easy. Let's start over. I spent most of the morning probing around for an existing septic system. There was a house here before, but the county did not have a good record of where the thing was. After a while, I was just lucky enough to find this, a little piece of pipe sticking out of the ground. I followed it and it led to the old septic tank. That was a major save right there. And it was worth the effort. We actually had the house laid out across the top of the septic tank, which would have been bad news. I had my septic man, Chris Dietz, look over this tank and make sure it was in good working order, which it was, thankfully. Then we followed the outlet to a distribution box, which led to the leach field lines, which we also had to trace down to make sure they weren't under the house, which they were. Man, this house was laid out in the wrong spot to start with. Yeah. <laughs> in order to find the exact location of these leach field lines, we used a locator. This is a two-part operation. One person feeds a snake into the line that has a locator on it, while the other person traces it from on top of the ground and marks it with some marking paint. Uh, I got to try this for a while and it wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be. These guys are pros and they know it. Right there. That uh, takes some practice. It's not as easy as it looks, actually. Dang, dang. Yeah, take a look at what that looks like. Saves a lot of probing. Yeah. Wow. All right. He's got a little light on uh -huh. that and he's getting a little ding on the... Looks like a little key fob for your yeah. truck almost. Yeah. Cool. All right, we've located that line. Now we're gonna mark six feet off the line because five feet is the minimum and we actually don't have much room on this property. Uh, so we need every bit we can get. So a foot extra just to be safe from all this septic stuff. And we can actually start laying it out. We started laying out this foundation by setting one corner, <laughs> one pin to start with, and then we were able to pull diagonals along with a straight measurement with long tapes to get all the other corners. Now this is a fairly small, simple house, and that's why I'm doing this series about it. Every step will happen a little faster than on a big project. All right, 41, two, and 3 sixteenths, right there. Pop it in. Inside. Yep. Once we had all of the corners square and pinned, we pulled some reference locations. And instead of using batter boards in this case, we just used some two by four stobs with a T25 deck screw in the top. This is a really flat site and not a complicated foundation. So this was a great way to save a little time. Also the track hoe can run right over these things when he's digging without tearing them up like a batter board. Our next step was to mark the outside of the actual footings. Now this is five inches outside of our pins because our pins mark the actual foundation. Since we're using a 20 inch wide bucket, we're gonna end up with five inches of the footing sticking out both sides of the foundation. Oh, got your fingers. Which is eight inches wide. This property has a bamboo forest on it and it was cleared about a week ago. Now it's 12 feet tall again. I bought a machete today. Now that everything was laid out and squared up, it was time to actually dig the footings. This is the fun part. I love watching machines operate. I'm not very good at it, but Chris is really good. My job was to run this laser reader and make sure he was digging to the right depth as we dug along. You don't wanna dig deeper than you need to because you're just gonna end up dumping extra concrete in there. If you're wondering how I figured out how deep to dig, I simply went 12 inches down from the lowest point on this whole area. 12 inches down is the code here for frost line. And I kept this rock. That's definitely the state of North Carolina. Man, Chris did a really nice job here. These footings are straight and perfectly level on the bottom. Next, I went around and probed the footings. Now the inspector will also do this, but I do it before he shows up to make sure every spot in these footings is good enough to hold this house up. 
This will save you time and make you not fail an inspection, by the way. Next, I reset the laser reader on the grade pole eight inches higher than the bottom of the footings. This will represent the top of the concrete in the footings. After spreading out some grade pegs, in this case I use 3 8 rebar, I will just go around and tap them in until they're all perfectly level with one another. And this is really important. I put them about five feet apart, that way it's easy to get the concrete level. If you ever tried to lay block on a foundation that didn't have grade pegs set by a laser, I'm sorry. One time some guys did a footing for us and they used no grade pegs at all. I watched them cut every single block on the first row to get it done. It was miserable looking. We also added two rows of number five steel to this footing. And it's not required by code around here, but of course we do it anyway. It's very cheap insurance to make sure that your foundation is really strong. They have to overlap by two feet anywhere they join and you simply tie them together with this steel wire. Here's another really important step. Make sure to clip any roots or other organic matter out of your footing. You don't want this stuff hanging in and making a termite highway right into your house or getting all in your concrete while you're trying to finish it. Here's a look from the top of the hill. Chris actually adjusted the grading so water would flow to the back of the site and then off to the left. You don't want it running off the front because it'll erode the fill. I also spent quite a bit of time on the phone making sure that Duke Energy was going to come take these power lines down. They run right across the top of where the house is. We want to go underground and get rid of these things. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching our video today and make sure to check out this whole series about building a house. It should really help you out if you're doing your own project. Also keep an eye out for a related video that I'm putting out on site planning, what you need to do to get your site ready. It goes right along with this series. Thanks for joining us today.